February 1780. Though I have not had the happiness of a personal acquaintance with you, I have had the good fortune to see several very pretty pictures of your person and mind. Your sister carries a beautiful copy constantly about her. You will no doubt admit it as a full proof of my frankness and good opinion of you that I, with so little ceremony, introduce myself to your acquaintance and at the first step make you my confidant. Your confidant? For what? By some odd contrivance or other, your sister has found out the secret of interesting me in everything that concerns her. Ugh, oh, not you too, Eliza. If you fall in love, I'll be left all alone. Wait, what do you mean, sir, by some odd contrivance? She has overset all the wise resolutions I had been framing, and from a rational sort of being, and a professed contender of Cupid, has in a trice metamorphosed me into the veriest inamorato you perhaps ever saw. It is essential to the safety of the state, and to the tranquility of the army, that one of two things take place. Either that she be immediately removed from our neighborhood, or that some other nymph, qualified to maintain an equal sway, come into it. I solicit your aid. Good lord. <laughs> well, your suitor obviously thinks himself quite the charmer, Eliza. Go to Morristown? Now? In four feet of snow? Would the horses survive the journey in such killing cold? What if the sleigh were to get stuck? Can I safely slip past the Tory Rangers and British patrols without their capturing me? And Papa asked me to watch over the house and the children while he's in Philadelphia for Congress. I should not be absent if one of his spies comes with vital intelligence. But this Hamilton seems such a rogue. No, I must go. Eliza needs me. Besides, I'm tired of always being left behind. The afterthought, Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy. Time for a little revolution of my own. 